Hi there and welcome back. Now, using click tracks or backing tracks in our musical productions is becoming more and more popular these days. And as such, we musicians may be a little uncomfortable about this, but it's something more and more of us music directors need to be, dare I say it, well, we just need to get used to it and accept it. In today's video, I want to share something with you that I've been working on for nearly 12 months now. And that is a variety production of musical theatre numbers that is to be performed in a commercial theatre here in the UK in a few weeks time. In this video then, I'm going to show you how I prepare my tracks for playback in QLab. If you haven't done so already, then please do subscribe by hitting the red button and do let me know if there are any specific subjects you'd like me to cover in the comments section, or you can email me directly at musicdirectoronline at gmail.com. At the start of any production where I am employed as music director, I make early decisions on whether I'm going to be using tracks or a band or perhaps a mixture of both. And together with that decision, I decide upon is how the music is going to be created and played. There are many systems today to help with this, whether it be the hire of musicians in the traditional sense for providing all the musical backing, the hire and use of tracks only, or a mixture of tracks and live musicians playing to a click track for synchronization. In this particular production for which I'm currently preparing, I made an early decision that as it was to contain a variety of musical styles, a mixture of live band playing with tracks would be best suited to this production. I booked my musicians and started on the tracks in association with the director. Now, just to give you a flavour of the different musical styles I'm talking about, this production involves songs from a wide variety of musicals, including Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables, We Will Rock You, Blues Brothers, Calamity Jane and Call Me Madam. OK, now some of you won't have heard of some of those shows, I'm sure. But for those of you that do know musical theatre, you can appreciate it's a varied mix. Now, the basis of such tracks and how they are produced, I covered in this video, where I went into a lot of detail as to how such tracks are put together. Take a look at it if you haven't seen this already. In short, the actual tracks I play in the theatre won't have the instruments that I use in the band, as they, of course, will play live. So then, my preferred band for this particular production and setup is myself on keyboards, mainly piano, drums and percussionist, bass guitar, and a lead guitar playing rhythm guitar using both electric and acoustic instruments. Here's some of my happy band in a previous similar setup. The advantages and disadvantages of using software other than QLab for playing the actual tracks are discussed in a recent video using Apple's main stage software. Take a look here if you haven't seen that one already. But in this production, I will be using around 40 tracks of various musical styles. And with that number of tracks, I wouldn't really be comfortable using main stage and using main stage for the keyboard patches at the same time. So, as I always do, and I highly recommend, it required an early conversation with the sound people at the venue to ensure I'm not preparing anything that would be a waste of time and that their happy can be successfully reproduced, given my proposed setup. Now, for those of you that have done this type of work before, you may be ahead of me at this stage and telling me that I should be preparing two sets of tracks. Two sets of tracks. Why is that? Well, First, I prepare a set of rehearsal tracks. Tracks used for rehearsal purposes only, i.e. when the band isn't there. These tracks I mix down as MP3s. Now, why MP3s? Well, because they are much smaller files than the ones I will actually use in the theatre itself, and therefore they are easier to move around and share. When using tracks I have recorded in a production like this, I find it very useful to create, say, a Gmail or a Google account with a folder sharing function. You could use Dropbox or something similar and then give access to those who need these files. In this instance, the director of choreographers, etc. Or anyone who needs access to the files when I'm not at rehearsal. 
It is also a much easier way to make changes to any tracks, any cuts for instance, or tempo changes that have altered during the rehearsal phase. You can make the change, upload it once, and it's available for all those who need it. The second set of files then are those I will actually use with the band. And this time I would recommend WAV files. WAV files for two reasons. Firstly, they contain a great deal more detail as they are not compressed files like MP3s. And when played on a much larger system like in a theatre, you need as much detail in the samples you've used as possible. And secondly, QLab doesn't really like MP3s. Now, I know the majority of times, well, in my experience anyway, MP3 files will play using QLab, but it isn't a recommended or preferred file format. Now, I'm not 100% sure why that is. Perhaps someone from the QLab fraternity could let me know. But with anything like this that involves public performance, I want any setup I use to be as robust secure and foolproof as I possibly can. And if QLab doesn't recommend that file format, if at all possible, I'm staying clear. Okay then, so we now have two sets of files, the rehearsal set, um, MP3s, and the performance set, the ones I'll be actually using with the band, uh, what I'm calling that, my performance set. And if we go over to my desktop, uh, you'll see that I've got two folders here, performance set and rehearsal set, uh, not in any particular order, but that's just a load of MP3s. And in here, I will have produced um, folders for each number because in each of these, there will be um, the actual file that I'm going to be playing and another file that has the click, but more about that later. Now for the BDI among you, um, my desktop picture at the moment is a gig that I played quite recently. And yes, you can see up there in the corner, it is main stage. No tracks were involved. I was using main stage in that instance. So let's open up um, a, blank, um, a blank file in QLab. And um, as far as the rehearsal set is concerned, it's very, very, very simple. Um, and for those of you that are not particularly um, familiar with QLab, let me just demonstrate how easy it is. We have a load of MP3 files here that I'm going to use. We could just, let's just choose that many for now. It really is as easy as just dragging them across and there they appear in the list. Uh, and by hitting the space bar, um, they will um, start to play. Let's just find something that might make some sense. Um, there you go. The Miserable and Phantom Medley. Is it going to play for me? Come on. There we go. Um, boop, boop, boop. There's a particular playoff of the opening number called a musical. And one thing about QLab, if you don't already know, is that because it's used for audio, well, and video and everything else in theatre, um, um, it's not like any kind of MP3 player where you play one track and then hit another track and the next track starts. It will start, but it will overlap um, so that I can, I can start playing a particular track there and then hit again, and then both tracks are playing at the same time. I can hit a third time, and three tracks will start playing at the same time. You see what I mean? They overlap each time. That's something to be aware of if you're not used to using QLab. But that is relatively straightforward to load files um, for rehearsal purposes. Now, something a little bit more different, little different. If we just um, delete those, this time we're going to go in what I prepared uh, a performance set. Now, um, each number in the production that requires a track, I've created a folder in this instance um, because it keeps things a little bit um, easier. If we take, for instance, um, this particular number, um, I'm calling it a Phantom Lemmy's medley, which is what it is. You'll see um, that I actually have, actually have two files. Um, there's the one that's going to be the actual file that's going to be played. And then I've got a second file, which is a click track. 
Now, the way that QLab works um, in as far as playing two tracks at the same time and triggered at the same time is quite a bit different from the video that I did a few weeks ago on doing the same process in main stage. Um, QLab uses what's called um, parent and child. Um, I don't know why they use those particular terms, but basically um, a parent is, you could say a folder and a child is the files within that folder. Let me explain. So rather than just creating um, um, an audio cue, um, which would be um, adding a cue there and telling it which cue to play, etc., etc., I'm not going to do that. Um, oops, oops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a group. They like to call it groups, but I like to call them folders, to be honest. Um, and that group I'm going to be called, let's call it song one, for instance. Um, now we can, in, now for song one, um, I've got two tracks. I've got the main track and I've got the click track. So let's just bring those two in um, and we could do it. We could do it this way, couldn't we? Just actually select them both and bring them both in. It takes a little bit longer to load because these are much bigger files, of course, um, uh, WAV files. And, and we select those two and we'll actually drag them into other folder. Okay. So now when we play song number one, one, two, three, four, you only hear that first file. Okay, let's stop that. If I was to press the actual track itself, it would play fine. But we need to start them at the same time. And this is where it varies very slightly. So we go into the folder containing these two files. Um, and down at the bottom here, under mode, we have various modes. Um, and it's set at the moment to start the first child and enter into the group. In other words, it's, if we if we hit at the start or the go button for song number one, the first child in this instance is the click track. We don't want that. Um, but we're actually going to go back to the first option in the timeline, start all the children simultaneously. I think it's just really unfortunate terminology, to be honest. Um, but now that that option um, is pressed, um, if I hit song number one, one, two, three, four, we get the click and we get the track playing together. We would then close that song number one and with the wind, then we'd start with song number two. Um, let's call it, for sake of simplicity, um, song number two. We'll do exactly the same as we did before. Let's take, um, let's take another, um, I don't know, let's go with a playoff, musical two playoff, and musical two click for the playoff. Um, drag them in as we did before. Select the two files, put them into the parent or the folder as I like to call it. Highlight and set the timeline to start them all at the same time. We can close that. So now we have song number one, hit the go button. One, two, three, four. And away we go. It's already queued it for song number two, hit the go button. One, two, three, four. So slightly different way of loading tracks. Um, now, for those of you that are slightly ahead of me again, I talked in a previous video about um, paid versions and free versions of QLab. Um, when it comes to um, the actual tracks themselves, um, you will need to, you will need to um, direct which track goes to which output channel. Now, the setup I'm using at the moment is uh, my Scarlett 4i4, four inputs and four outputs. 
Um, but because I'm using in this instance the free version of QLab, um, it's not seeing all those outputs. It's only seeing um, outputs one and two, i.e left and right channels. Um, now, if you've put all this, as I've said previously, if you've put all this work into creating all these channels, the last thing that you want to do is, is to have your works, uh, sorry, if you've put all this um, effort into um, creating these tracks, the last thing you want to do is to reproduce them in mono, i.e. having a mono track and then on one channel and then the right channel or left, whichever way you want to go uh, with the click. Um, so when I move into the theatre, I'll be using the paid for version of this, um, which will give me a stereo um, output into the main house or to the sound guys to, to put into the main house. Um, and then a mono track will go through by um, mixer in the band to go to the headphone um, amplifier um, and mixer, which will then go to the band for them to listen to the click, but more about that in a future video. So we're all set for the first rehearsal with the band. The one day I always kind of look forward to, but with some trepidation in the full knowledge that anything can and sometimes does go wrong. It could be you've left a drum track in the mix and you've got a drummer there wondering what to play or some cast member wanting to run the number again for whatever reason. No, no, no! The band call is my rehearsal. And it's for me and the band, not for someone who's had months of rehearsal already. Yeah, I can get quite touchy at that point in the rehearsal process. So, I hope that has been of some interest. In some following videos, we'll look at my setup in the actual theatre and I'll show you how all the equipment I've talked about in the first video on using tracks gets connected together on location in the theatre itself. See you soon.